Bhagavad Gita, in many places in Gita, we read Sanskrit word punya, which is sometimes translated as pious deeds. So we know punya, punya, punya. punya. yes, pious, pious deeds. deeds. Yes. So we know that even for bhakti, we need to have some pious deeds even to start. Yes. Uh, the ways are different. Uh, back in, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the most common way is Sadhu Sangha as, as a way of getting those, those deeds for Bhakti. But my question is about Agyata Sukriti, because Bhakti Vinod Thakur is not using the word Punya, but he's using the word Sukriti. And he's explaining uh, in, in his books what Sukriti means and what is Agyata Sukriti. But honestly, I was trying many times to find any, any description from the Shastra about this Agyata Sukriti, and I couldn't find. So, can we consider that Agyata Sukriti, an explanation by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, is kind of preaching strategy? Or is there any reference uh, to Agyata Sukriti as an as idea uh, in Shastras? Because, as I said, uh, I was unsuccessful in, in finding any direct reference to it. So okay, indeed. I like to clarify this, make it very clear in the first place that <coughs> it was not just preaching strategy. Thakur Sila Bhakti Vinod didn't just mention it as simply merely as a preaching strategy, but in factually um, put importance on that. Mm -hmm. So, Agyata Sukriti is known as unknown spiritual merits. In other words, the accumulation of some unknown Spiritual merits is called Agyata Sukriti. Let me explain a little bit. To understand into the nature of Agyata Sukriti, okay, an apparently unknown uh, virtuous deed, virtuous acts, called merits. So while, while we engage in some very pious activities, activities in the mode of goodness, just in a very natural way, without false pride, just um, in a natural flow of some uh, spontaneous happiness, then that creates some virtuous fruits, fruits, <coughs> fruits of our karma. And many times we are not conscious of, of the fact that how much uh, uh, good fruits, how much uh, virtuous fruits or merits we are acquiring through our activities, pious activities or deeds. But still, result takes place, result comes. But that is known as Agyata Sukriti. <coughs> hmm. For example, like uh, Many examples have, have been given, such as, suppose you paid for digging a pond, or you arranged for creating a nice pond with pure water. And basically, uh, you, did, you just did it with a view of social welfare work social welfare activities. But what happened? One day, some pure sadhu, just passing by the pond, so 
He felt like bathing. It was very hot. Felt like bathing and he bathed in that pond. Did some tarpana with the mantra, with the pond water. Okay. I felt very happy. Just taking a bath in the pond and did some chanting of the mantra, did tarpana. Okay. Came out. The, that pious result directly got credited into the account of that person who created that pond. Okay. So, that pond was used, it gave so much facility for other villagers or, you know, other persons or bathing, okay, washing clothes, or taking water and then somehow purifying, purifying the pond water and drinking in this way. So the results, the fruits achieved from those normal, you know, virtuous actions that many other people, people, local people getting benefited, taking water from the pond, to be understood like Punnam, just some virtuous, virtuous results being acquired. Punnam, not Sukriti. But when a sadhu, pure sadhu, a pure devotee got into the pond and enjoyed bathing, did some tarpana to the Pitri Purushar, okay, for the devotees, for the Lord. Okay, through the mantras within the pond water, it is done in the Vedic way. Okay. Then immediately, because the pond water was utilized now, as the pond water now utilized by pure sadhu, pure devotee of the Lord, okay, you, uh, utilized in his service, immediately Shukriti came into being. Shukriti <coughs> started being accumulated. Okay. So as the more and more, suppose the more and more other sadhus, other devotees of God using the pond water or worshipping or cleaning the temple premises, other things, some spiritual, special, by all that, some special spiritual merits started being accumulated in the account stored in the account of that person who paid for digging that pond or created that pond with his time, energy and money. An example of how Agnata Sukriti comes. There is a difference between Sukriti and Punnam. Punnam is more general type. General kind of virtuous results and fruits. Whereas Sukriti is a special one. It is it is connected to divine, connected to divine acts, divine services, divine personality. In other words, there is some godly connection. Any action which receives some godly connection, okay, connect, connects, connection of the divinity, connection of the pure devotees, okay, causes to bring up Shukriti, create Shukriti. But that pond maker, that person who created the pond, did not know that is happening. How much Shukriti being credited in his account, he doesn't know, but still is happening. This one example, there are many, many such examples like that. Suppose someone created, made hospitals, and at certain points, some of the pure sadhus got little bit treatment in the hospital. Sukriti. Sukriti, okay, uh, Sukriti is being transferred, credited to the, in the account of that person who created the hospital. So in this way, creating pawn or hospital, creating a, sometimes uh, creating some resting place beside the road, 
in making the building, building the temple, okay, giving out some foodstuffs, like food for relief, food for life. And whenever some pure devotee, any divine personalities are taking any any advantage of all those, as soon as they are taking any facilities from all those, immediately Sukriti being created. These are some examples of how the unknown spiritual merits created in the life. So they, they become very helpful to cultivate spiritual life. Ordinary punnam cannot do that. Ordinary punnam is good to bring happiness and enjoyment and uh, to it helps a lot to live life in the mode of goodness with higher thoughts and ideas. But Sukriti is something, it is some special wealth, some special merit which is specifically utilized to facilitate the cultivation of life divine, life of devotion in relation to the Lord. So now back to the past. So that has a vital role to play, you know. You know, especially in the beginning of the cultivation of a devotional life. Thakur Bhakti Vinod was very right. Okay. He never said that this only the Sukriti or unknown spiritual merit is the only root cause, but one of the causes is one of the good causes to cultivate, to promote life of devotion, life of servitude. So it is very valuable. Lord has given us a free will. Every Jeevoshal is endowed with the free will with the Lord. So when one utilizes one's free will in a best way instead of misuse, doing something great and best, uh, very greatly pious, then some good outcome comes out of it. Lord becomes very happy that the free will which I have given in Him or Her now being utilized for the best cause, okay, for, the be for the best benefit of life, is being utilized in connection of my service and, or the services to my devotees. So, there should be special grant, special merit should be granted for that. No ordinary welfare activity. So, again, Shukriti comes from the divinely welfare activities. And the more it gets accumulated, accumulated, the more it comes, a certain point of life it comes in great help to cultivate. Assist, at least assist cultivating our devotional life. So it has some function. So it is needed. But one of the, this is one of the causes. Not that only Sukriti is the sole cause or one and only cause to cultivate spiritual. There are other factors also. And what is your question, Peter? Uh, two points. Uh, I, I completely am fine with explanation of, of the importance and whole idea of okay. Socrates. But the second part was, can we find any uh, like reference? reference? Scriptural. Scriptural reference, because I know that this term, Agyata Socrates, or Agyata Socrates, uh, appears in Bhaktivinoda's uh, writings. And, uh, in Bhagavata, in Bhagavad Gita, we can't find, even in Sandarbhas or in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we can't find. I think there might, there might be, not, not in so many places, but mm -hmm. 
have you one or two places it, it has been mentioned in scripture but I have to remember there is a story of a remember the verse of a mouse uh, doing um, like uh, letting the, the tail oh. this is the story of oh, a man oh, there are many stories but I was looking I was looking for some verse yes okay mm -hmm. some scripture verse that's what I don't remember otherwise there are many many stories not one or two yeah. not yeah. even several yeah. many 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 such stories described in many of the holy scriptures in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the Puranas, many of the Puranas, okay, the Shilma Purana, Varahu yeah. Purana, okay, then um, at, uh, Purma Purana, Shiva Purana, Mahapurana, yes, and also Srimad Bhagavatam also called as Maha Maha Purana. Yes. So, so there are many such stories that by some special pious acts special pious acts which connected to God which uh, were somehow connected with God and service service to God and service to his devotees okay brought such a huge result okay created such a special result okay so that in the next life or even during that lifetime, okay, or in the next life, uh, the devotee became so much helped, he got a special upliftment, okay, promotion, aided by, helped by the fruits or the merits of those, you know, uh, pious acts, spiritual acts unknown way. Such references are found from the lifetime of Prahlad Maharaj, previous life of Prahlad Maharaj, which you are saying. Okay. Even Devurshi Narada. Okay. Why it's not found then uh, to some extent. Mm, Ajamila. Ajamila Pakhan. Hmm. I have to remember, there are many, many, many such. stories also of uh, the opposite situation when someone unknown, unknowingly offends and also the reaction comes uh, unknowing offends to a sage, a motive that is also mm -hmm. like present. Yes, both are there. <laughs> Sukriti and something opposite to Sukriti. Yeah. Risk is always there. Wherever or if there is some gain, or if there is possibility of gain, there will be some risk. They go side by side. But as long as one is very sincere, true to his or her own self, praying for the forgiveness and grace, divine grace of the Lord and His pure devotees, they, they become taken care of. They become definitely taken care of. Means all the bad things come unknown way. Okay. All get, get purified and forgiven. It happens. But that sincerity, that you know that uh, that heartfelt prayer has to be there. Heartfelt Prayer, okay, with heartfelt sincerity, has to be there. Then okay? it's all forgiven by the merciful Lord and pure devotees. You know, many, many things, many, many sinful acts of our life get forgiven by Lord. Otherwise, people could not live their life. Their life would be so fulfilled with suffering and suffering, terrible. You know. One day an atheist came to me. I don't believe in God. You, you, you sometimes speak of the offenses against God, but I don't believe. I don't believe in the God in the first place. So how can I believe that I am committing offense to God because He is not even existent? To whom should I commit offense? I said, do you believe in yourself? Just tell me in the first place. 
Do you believe in yourself? Of course. Then you have no way out. You have to believe in God. Because you are not the creator of yourself. And, okay, I know. I am not creator of myself. I mean, then how you are created? Oh, I am created by the law of nature. Very good. <laughs> and I said, do you know something? Parents cannot give birth to a child if it is not validated by the law of nature. And if the law of nature cannot even work, if it is not validated by the potency of the superpower, super personality of the superpower. You, know, you can create any law, but it doesn't mean anything unless it is implemented in a valid practical way. Otherwise it just stays as some imagination, law, law. But law becomes validated in the field of practice by some power. And that is coming from the superpower. <clears throat> then I told him. Actually, he was posing question in a way. Swamiji, I don't believe in God. Can you make me believe in God? I said, look. Suppose if you are a dead body right now. You become a dead body. You won't even speak a little bit of word like this. You won't have the ability to speak out a, a little bit in this life. I don't believe in God. Can you make me believe in God? By whose? Because He is present within you. That's why you are able to boast against Him. Speak something, you're boasting out, speaking something against you, I don't believe in God. So, such boasting is also being empowered, okay, in a way, by the presence of God within you. If you are a dead body, you cannot even speak. Your lips will not speak out, your tongue will not say anything, your lips will not move. Okay, you cannot even think anything. You're a dead body. Okay. So understand something by validated by whose power you can you are even boasting I don't today you are boasting before me I don't believe in God God can you make me believe in God that is God's potency you are trying to you are trying to deny him validated by his potency do you realize that when you are dead body everything is there your lips tongue eyes, ear, head, legs, heart, everything. Still you are not there to boast even. So that is God. That is God. By whose potency you are able to boast, you are able to deny Him, trying to deny Him, that is God. Without His potency you cannot even deny Him. He understood. He kept silent for a moment. Yes, it's very true. He immediately said, Maharaj, you have got to realize yourself. You are a realized soul. That's why you answered me such a practical way. It's very true. If I am a dead body, I cannot boast in this way. So this power coming from who? Then in that relation I explained to him, you know, God forgives many offenses in our life out of Affects and that's why we can live. Because he was originally talking about, oh, I don't believe because I don't believe in blasphemy to God because I don't believe in His existence in the first place. That's how he started. I said, know something. When babies in mother's lap, or even not even baby, little bit grown up child, a child little bit grown up, takes out so much anger and emotion on mother, like beating and kicking, but mother and father and all, they understand, they're my, it's my child, okay, they forgive, easily forgive, they take all this, because they have a fix and they forgive, that's why those children can survive, can lovingly grow, if parents want to take action against them, the children will be suffering. 
they cannot go away because they have no other shelter than parents. Immediate shelter. Parents are their shelter. And they are, sometimes they are trying to offend. They are offending the very shelter of them. Okay? So, and parents are forgiving by nature. I mean, good parents. And real, ideal parents are not. Because here, upon coming to European, Western countries, I hear many stories. Parents are not being very good all the time with the children, uh, they lose patience. I'm talking about the ideal parents. So ideal parents always try to teach them nicely and forgive the children without taking offense, knowing oh, they're a small child. Our God also does the same because he forgives many offenses in our life, known and unknown. Therefore, we can live our life peacefully and happily. Had it been the case, the bad activities of the people would not have been forgiven, or, okay, at least uh, compassionately considered, not completely forgiven, but you know, kindly considered so that punishment becomes less. Then all the people's life, many, many persons engaged in sinful activities like <coughs> in their life would become just hell. People engaged in sinful activities would just uh, simply live a life of suffering every day. Hell is life. So because people don't have to take all the you know, reactions from the bad activities. Therefore, they can, <clears throat> more or less, they can live their life happily, bit peacefully, nicely. On this plane, although some suffering are there time to time, experience of pain and pleasure, both are there, but still, comparatively, they can live a happy, peaceful life because many, many offenses, offensive things forgiven. Otherwise, it would be terrible, terrible life of suffering. So when people think, oh, I did this sinful activity, I did this bad thing, what is happening to me? Nothing is happening to me, nothing will happen. They are very ignorant and very stupid, illusioned, so much living under the bliss of ignorance living so much under the bliss of ignorance, under so much illusion. Okay. Many of the... many results, you know, many results from our bad activities, sinful activities, don't come immediately. They don't appear through immediate reaction. They come later, like slow poison. You take a slow poison, you won't immediately die. It may take a month uh, to cause someone's death. But because it's not immediately felt, directly experienced immediately, doesn't mean it's not reacting. Doesn't mean it doesn't have, it is not uh, having reaction in my body. It is, when it comes to the surface, when it comes to the level of the solid experience, then we can realize, oh, oh, I'm poisoned. I'm having now poisonous effects. I'm becoming sick due to this poisonous effect, slowly working in my body. So many things happen in our life from the we don't know about. When it comes to the surface of a direct experience, then only we come to know, oh, it is happening. But it already started happening from the beforehand, whether any positive or negative things, like, for example, some sickness. That sickness already started happening in the beforehand, but because it didn't come to a tangible level of experience of my life, the, my body was tolerating and fighting, trying to fight, so I didn't feel sick. But as when it became intensified and came 
on certain level, then I can experience I am sick. But the sickness not appearing then and there, immediately, it already started happening beforehand. Yeah? Slowly it's building up, then when my body cannot take it anymore, I feel sick. So something started happening before I actually experience. Okay, also the way of the karma, so many things. I can also give the positive result, positive example, similar way. Many things positive are taking place in my life through the practice of spiritual life, whether or not we understand immediately. Like we are chanting holy names of the Lord, we think, oh, nothing is happening to me, I am not experiencing. No, it's a very wrong idea. Already some good, good things. I have already started accumulating some good fruits in some way. For any, from, from chanting the holy names of the Lord, engaging in service to the Lord and devotees, okay, engaging in some saintly activities, devotional activities, whether or not I immediately get the result, experience the result, but they are happening. When the time will come, all these accumulated merits will come in big help in my life. Okay. So none of the, it is also, Lord, Lord also says in Bhagavad Gita, Svalpama, Prasya Dharmasya Trayate Mahantur Bhaya. Even someone does something very, very little out of great sincerity and devotion to me, to my devotees, that can rescue, save his life from great danger even. Okay? Even somebody offers to me simple thing like water, flower, tulasi leaves, okay? With some devotion, I accept them with I accept them with great love, I, okay, and in, in return, in return of that such service, that person becomes so much spiritually benefited, devotionally benefited. Lord Krishna says, yes. Mm, so I have not completed. Oh, so let sorry. me, because I am a very thorough person, I want to... Okay, you want to... Okay. I want to answer to thorough analysis. So that's how even so many things positive in our life also start happening before it is directly experienced by us. But the fact that we are not immediately experiencing about the happenings of certain positive or negative things in our life doesn't mean it's not happening. When it's come to a level of a tangible experience, then only we come to know it's happening. Otherwise we cannot, but we don't know means, it doesn't mean, we don't know doesn't mean necessarily that it's not happening. So sometimes devotees have question in mind, we are doing, engaging in so many good activities, not getting good result immediately. Am I progressing? Really, am I, am I really accumulating some spiritual merits? Question may arise. The answer is yes, nothing. Nothing of your sincere service endeavor can go in vain. Will never go in vain. All being registered, okay, by the Supreme Lord, by the law, spiritual law created by Supreme Lord. Everything is registered mm -hmm. in the world of the Supreme Lord. So that will never go in vain. Yes. Um, uh, I, I, uh, actually, I was speaking with Madhu about uh, this Agyata Sukriti thing because we have like many students and uh, we sometimes feed them prasadam that is prepared by us. And does it, uh, we were wondering, uh, this is our new topic, whether they really benefit from it or not. Uh, like, do they actually perform some kind of agyata You first, first you offer those foodstuffs to the Lord. Yes. Then, okay, then it becomes prasad, then actually yes, distribute then the prasada. Yes, de definitely. Both sides will be benefited. The distributor and those distributed to. Both will be benefited. So it's some kind of agyata Yes. And that, mm. Well, no, it is not on Gata Shukriti exactly, because you know it, what you are doing. So it will be Gata Shukriti. 
from the perspective Gano of, from of those the children who, who, who and the students. Yes, it, it, it will be considered as spiritual merits? No. Mm -hmm. Agyata means unknown. Okay, as I gave example, you did something, you created some great facilities for, for many, many people, okay? And for, with the mode of social welfare work, or with the, with the mode of with the uh, with the spirit of doing good to the, all the people, human beings, animals, everyone. Then, when some sadhus are taking the facility of those good creations by someone, when those good creations being utilized in some way in the service to the Lord and sadhus, then some unknown merits being created, which that person who created, who or who became instrumental to create all this, did not know. He was not aware of what is happening, that some great devotees are using his stops, okay, the, his facilities, everything. So he did not know, but still merits being credited in his life. That is called unknown, unknown way. Okay? But both are merits, whether unknown or known. What you have just said is a known, it is in the known category. Okay? Known on my side? Known, known to yourself, yes. but not known to those people, yes. unless you no. make them aware take this prasadam, when you are making them aware, you are taking prasadam of God, it's not just some normal, I mean, ordinary food stuff you are eating, but actually eating the prasadam of God. When you make them known, then when they believe in that, then it becomes a known merits for them. They acquire some known merits. Mm -hmm. But when they, suppose they don't believe in it, they're taking just some, oh, oh, she is a monk, she is a lady nun, so she is just, uh, she is doing her duty, she has to say in that way, so she is just doing her duty. I am just tasting as some delicious food stuff. Don't believe in taking prasadam, but still there will be some merits and that will be unknown by those people because they don't believe in, it's not really known. But you know what you are doing, so it will be a known Shukriti for you. For those people will be unknown, but when they start believing in, actively believing, oh, I'm taking Lord's prasadam. I'll receive so much merits from it, higher merits, which will help my spiritual life. Then it becomes known merits. So whether merits, spiritual merits in any way, whether known or unknown, very extremely beneficial, both are beneficial. But Maharaj, what you said uh, at the beginning of your explanation, I find the, the most uh, um, important one, that is only one of the factors. Because there are some Gaudiya missions, I can even mention one, but uh, just let's forget which one, which makes their own uh, vision or strategy for doing these Agyata Sukritis from the perspective of preaching as a, the main, main activity. So going outside, chanting, doing Nagar, Sankirtan, or doing this kind of activities is considered by some devotees like spreading, spreading mercy of Mahaprabhu in the way of Agatha Sukhi. Because maybe somebody will listen, maybe somebody will just get some yeah. uh, some scars. I agree. Yes, some, it some will be a Sukriti for those people. Yes, that's but right. for not for the devotees. No, 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 no. Yes. You, we are talking only about audience. Yes, yes? You know, innocent people who are not, uh, they have no knowledge. They, they, they exactly. don't start even they. As they long as they remain unaware. Yeah. Of that they are hearing the actually they are hearing the chanting of the holy names, taking the prasadam of the God, then it's all gata sukriti, definitely. Yeah. But as soon as they come to know about consciously now, consciously relating to Krishna consciousness with the knowledge that it will bring, bring up so much merit, spiritual merits if they engage in such a chanting of the holy name, okay, doing some Kirtan activity or engaging in service to the Lord, then it is becoming gato, 
Mm. Yeah, that's okay. No. But sometimes there's... But I'll just, just finish. I'm saying that uh, when somebody knows that Siddhanta is, that is only one of the factors, so you can't emphasize uh, this whole idea of Agyata Sukriti and it can't be the base or foundation of your strategy of preaching Bhakti to uh, idea of Bhakti concept of Bhakti to others. Because if you will, will be running on the streets with bring with idea, I, I have offered some, I don't know, sweets, some ladu to, to Lord. And now I will be going, will be distributing prasad. And uh, so of course as you said, this is from your perspective is beneficial, yes, that you are distributing the mercy of the Lord. But for those people who are outside, yes, I, think, yes, yes. I think this is, but it, you can't make it as a mission of your life. Because uh, according to Gita, when you do something with knowledge, is much more powerful and beneficial for both sides than when you do, do it unconsciously. Like saying, please take this food. Okay, both have utility. I'm not comparing between them, but both have utility. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it can be a kind of preaching strategy too for someone. Yes. Like uh, distributing uh, prasadam, for example, to people who do not know anything about India. They just eat prasadam and they know nothing about it. Okay. When I say Thakur Bhakti, we know, didn't just mention it only merely as preaching strategy. Sometimes, you know, these lines of expressions, these, these, these ways of expression have twofold meanings. Mm -hmm. One like it's a kind of policy, technical, mechanical, some policy, okay, strategy, a very dry, formal sense, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. strategy, okay. Other way, you know, it is a conscious, beneficial, it is a, it is a system taken, a conscious system taken by the devotee, okay, because of uh, so much because of its beneficial nature. So, while you use the term strategy, it has twofold meanings. One is between, uh, just general negative way, yeah. dry, formal way. Another is full of life, full of well wishes. Mm -hmm. So, when you mean a second, with the second version of the preaching strategy, it's fine. Yes, because that, that means there is a, uh, a goal you are taking through that system, preaching system, right. So you are, you, you, are motiv you are motivated in a very beneficial, divinely, divinely motivated, okay. Using some strategy with divine motivations, okay. But then the, uh, there could be... Then it is not just strategy. It becomes a living system, okay. okay, full of life, full of affection, care for those people. Yes. So that's what I mean. Strategy, when strategy is filled with so much care, affection and love for others, there is not just only strategy, it is more than that. Okay, but then um, there is a danger to this, like, because I don't know if it's a danger or maybe that's a proper way to think. Like, we may think there's no difference between the souls and trapped in human bodies and souls and trapped uh, in, in animal bodies or vegetable bodies or anything like that. So let's just liberate uh, the grass and uh, chant Hare Krishna while mowing and let's just, uh, you know, cook as many carrots for Krishna's, but uh, you know what I mean, Maharaj. So we may think that we actually, by offering food to Krishna, liberating um, more than just human True. beings. Sure. So, sure. so this is also kind of a girl's greedy. Yes. So its effect is multifaceted. How do you call multifaceted? Yes. Those, those trees, plants, Vegetables being used to be offered to Lord, the devotees who, is, who, they, who themselves taking the prasad and also distributing to the whole, distributing the same prasad to the people. So now three sides are receiving benefit. Mm -hmm. All these three categories of the beings, living beings, getting benefited. 
like this. Okay. So benefits not just connected to only one category. All are interconnected. Very true. And again, back to the point of Gatana or Gata Sukriti. You may say sometimes, in a relative sense, you may call it as Gata Sukriti unknown merits. Like when, even when you are engaged in doing, doing something, great service. Okay. Some, some great loving service and you know that you are going to receive a great result out of it. <coughs> you know it by Siddhanta, by the knowledge that your such serving efforts will not go in vain, you are actually going to receive a great result. But you cannot directly know about how the result happening. Okay, you cannot prove to yourself immediately that is immediately producing some <coughs> great merits in your life. You don't directly experience it, but you just know by ideal and knowledge of Siddhanta it is it's going to happen. That's what is your expectation. Okay, so in a way it can also be called as unknown Sukriti. Because although you are conscious of the fact that it's going to bring so much uh, merits to you, but you don't directly experience it now. You don't know it directly. It's so a kind of unknown to you at this present moment. Although on principle you know it is going to bring so much good to you. Mm -hmm. So in a relative sense, that is also kind of Agyata Sukriti in that state. But as soon as you can relate, you can relate or experience that from such good services, actually you are receiving so much benefit. Then it comes on the plane of Gato Sukriti. No. But you are, you are more directly aware of it. So, different ways. And there is another thing I was pondering about, because uh, there is something like, like, one of the offenses about the Holy Name is that you chant the Holy Name like trying to like thinking that you will benefit from it like in a punya kind of way like mundane uh, so so this is one of the offenses and I wonder if for example um, it it is not so common amongst the devotees actually in the West because they they were like kind of trained from the beginning to be a bit selfless. But uh, there might be some kind of feeling, maybe on a deeper level, that oh, I'm doing it, and I will go, uh, I will be benefited by something, right. like, you know. And then you you do it a gyata, but then at one point you do it gyata, but in this negative way. Is it affecting actually the? If it is done with negative spirit, negative mm -hmm. selfish, motive, maybe motive. motive, especially mundanely selfish motive. Then it can create some offense to the holy name. And spiritual but self. spiritually, when one is spiritually motivated but to receive self. something, so there is nothing. There is no harm. That will not create any offense. Okay, there is nothing wrong with that. So selfish, uh, selfish. Selfish. What is okay? Spiritually selfish. Like I will go back to Godhead. Yes, that's I very good. When, see, when we use all these terms, selfies, uh -huh. or uh, selfies, selfless, valuable, invaluable, valueless, or invaluable, these terms are used in both ways, some in negative mm -hmm. way, some positive way. Okay? Like, for example, nirguna. Nirguna doesn't necessarily mean, oh, devoid of all qualities, <laughs> no, without any qualities. Nirguna means, transcending the trigunas, transcending the mundane qualification means qualified in a transcendental way, therefore it's called nirguna, surpassing the normal stage of the gunas, nirguna. Like for example we see invaluable, invaluable doesn't mean no oh, valueless, <laughs> because it's so much valuable one cannot give its price, one cannot really calculate its price value. Beyond, our cal beyond the calculation of our valuations, 
beyond the concepts of our valuation, therefore we call it invaluable. Doesn't mean valueless, but invaluable means more than valuable. Yeah. In a similar way, also, you know, when you say selfless, okay, doing something or selfish, okay, sometimes, <clears throat> okay, when we use the word selfless, oh, he's doing it very selfless way, but actually, like Nirguno, like found invaluable, priceless, okay, when we use, selfless can also mean in spiritual, in the, in the, in connection of the spiritual world, in relation to the achievement of the spiritual world, when you do some service in a selfless way, it can also mean very much self-full way. Because our, in, in exchange of that doing, that doing that service, I repeat, in exchange of doing that particular devotional service, we have got a great motive. Self-full motive, let me use this term. Selfless, I can say self-full. If I, because selfish is so negative connotation. Yes. So, devotees can have so much self-full motive. Oh, I will receive eternal loving connection with my beloved. Okay. I will, finally I will receive, okay, the, <clears throat> the, the taste of ecstatic love, love services to the divine couple. Okay all fulfilling, which is highest fulfillment of life. Okay. So see, the motive is there. But it's a very, very, it is a best motive, not just good, not just better, best motive. Okay. So sadhana means there is some motivations there. We have to eliminate the wrong motives and accept the right motives. Okay. Pratikulla vivarjana, anukulla shanga, acceptance of the favorables to life of devotion and rejection of the unfavorables to the same cause. So, when we say acceptance of those favorable to devotional life, that favor so it means we are receiving some favor. I will achieve some favor from this, that concept is there. So, back to the point. So, devotees can be, when the devotees become divinely motivated, devotionally motivated, motivated in a high class Krishna conscious way. In one, when, when selflessly motivated, is selflessly is used from the mundane comparison. Devotees, in one hand, selflessly engaged means without any mundane selfish interest. That is, so that selflessness is being applied for that, to mean that. Mund indicate mundane selflessness, but the same devotee is so self-fully motivated in the other direction because he or she knows that engaging in such services can bring so much benefit, spiritual benefit in life, so much gain, of course, high class spiritual gain, divine gain. Finally, the attainment of the Supreme Lord, okay, receiving the entrance into the beautiful, most beautiful divine world of ecstatic love relationship with the Supreme Divine Truth, the beloved Lordships. So, their ambition is pretty high, highest ambition they have. And wherever there is highest ambition, there will be motivation. A positive, very, very positive motivation. Very selfful devotees are also. Okay? So, clear. There is nothing, what to speak, there is nothing wrong with it. That's how it should be. Devotees should be selfully motivated in that way. And Lord enjoys that mood in devotee. Selfless in a mundane way, but selfful in a devotional way. But again, Selfful in which way? Devotional way. No business way. Oh, I am doing so much. Lord, you remember. Please remember, I am doing so much for you. So in return, you also have to pay me back. Okay, it's business dealings between you and me. Then it's no more devotion. 
but we could, so devotionally motivated. One can also be very selfful in a devotional, pure devotional way. Then it's very beautiful. Okay. We we'll have to we'll make some t-shirts. Don't be selfish. Be selfful. <laughs> Devotion. <laughs> Divinely. Divine. Divinely. You have to mention. Divine. Okay. Devotionally. <laughs> Krishna. He. Even the concept of our love for God is very much qualified by devotion, nature of devotion. A love without devotion is cheap class. Like mundane love. Mundane, you know, so-called so so love found on the mundane plane, which is so fragile, temporary type, is not qualified to be offered to Lord. Because on this plane, the mundane plane, the concept of love, feelings of love is purely, mostly based on one's own choice, one's own liking. Or because I like you so much, at this moment I love you so much. As soon as I, I hate you, I don't like you anymore, I don't love you. So it is also so much based on selfish motivations, give and take policy. Okay? All are contract. Conception of mundane love, worldly love, is like basically a contract. They all know, oh, give and take. I give you so much, you also give me back. Okay. And uh, so both sides, they expect from each other. Okay. Uh, as soon as that relation is no more there, some selfish contract is no more there, all love is gone. They hate each other. Yes. But the nature of the high class spiritual love, love divine, is never dependent on some selfish contracts. Okay. Self dependent. It is self dependent. Love for love. Okay? Not dependent on some business uh, give and take policy as soon as that is broken everything is gone it's not like that so that is called love with devotion love with proper respect because here we find I love you means it may not mean I respect you so much I like you so I love you as soon as I don't like you I don't love you so it's called cheap plus love coming and going coming and going without any commitment without any proper respect, respect, uh, responsibility of respects, respectful relations between. But the nature of spiritual love, divine love, is opposite to that. It's like dharma. It doesn't change depending on I like or I don't like. Only my whims. It doesn't change depending on my own whims. Okay? But it is itself, by itself, a dharma. A holy principle, a divine principle. It is called devoted love. So the love, the quality of love accepted by Lord Krishna, the kind of love which is qualified to be offered to Lord Krishna is a love with devotion. A respectful love, love with full, filled with respect, love filled with devotion. In other words, it's called <coughs> Loving devotion or devotional love. No cheap class love. Okay, so I just clarified in this relation. Which relation? That was self-full, selfish. <laughs> <laughs> One is business way, mundane business, another more devotional. Okay, devotional love is very different from a selfish love. Often we misunderstand selfish love to be a real love. It's not. Okay. Because that's very much conditioned by some expect motivation of expectation from each other. As soon as expectation is disturbed, love also gone. But love for Krishna is never like that. Gaur Haribo.